Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. When I make a video, I normally ask a question and have a pretty good idea of where that question is going to take me. This one is way different. We're going to start in a weight room and we're going to end up deep in the bowels of Johnson Space Center where we meet a lady who literally burns astronaut pee. We all know in space, if an astronaut sits around, he's going to lose muscle mass. But Earth is different. When I lift this weight, it's actually weight. So here's my question. Oh. How do astronauts lift weights in space? <laughs> to learn the answer to this, let's go talk to astronauts Don Pettit and Mike Hopkins. It doesn't look like you've been lifting quite as much no, I have a... as this man over here. I'm Destin. Hi, Hi Destin. I'm Mike. Mike, nice to meet you. And nice Mike, you. you've, uh, you're an expert at working out in space, right? Well, I've spent some time working out here on Earth, and uh, I just took that to space with me. You take people like Mike and I. And studs. Then... Let's be clear. Studs, right? Oh, oh, well, people like Mike. <laughs> and, you know, we're in the middle of life. We're healthy, and we go to station, and we get disease-like symptoms instilled in our bodies. Uh, from any number of venues, physiological venues, and and it's a great way to study the effect of these things and what's causing them and, and how to prevent them. Some of these diseases we're talking about take years to manifest here on Earth, but up in space, we'll see them in months, right. weeks. And so that's another advantage of doing it up in, in orbit. Oh, that, that makes sense. And, and we're working right now, this machine, which I like to call the beast, Everybody calls it the A-RED. Uh, Which stands for what? Uh, you know... Advanced Resistive Exercise. Oh, advanced okay. advanced Resistive... Dr. Bob. He's the expert. Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. You gotta keep these astronauts straight. It takes some special engineering thinking to make a machine that allows you to weight lift in a weightless environment. Before Dr. Bob explains how A-RED works, I wanted to see if I could figure this out. My first thought was to use a spring, but the more you compress a spring, the more force is required. Weight is a constant force, so that doesn't work. I thought about the same thing with elastic bands, but the more you stretch them, the more force is required, so that doesn't work either. My final thought was to use an air cylinder. If you plugged one into the air cylinder and you compressed it, that would work up to a point. But as the volume decreases, pressure increases, requiring more force. So how do they do it? The heart of the system are these two canisters right here. These okay. two canisters contain a vacuum. Now, if we could look inside the canister, you'd see a piston that would slide, you know. Oh, up wait down. a second, because a vacuum never changes. Yeah, the vacuum is always the same. It's always so the instead of pressurizing air and pushing against something, you're just going to pull it. The volume of your vacuum is right here between the piston and the top of the chamber. Okay. Now, when you pan down, attached to the piston is a rod that comes on down here and attaches here and here. Okay. And so the, the vacuum always wants to pull those rods up. Like a syringe. Like a, exactly like a syringe. Okay, this is really clever. Think about it. You've got a cylinder, a piston, and the atmospheric pressure all around. If you push the piston in all the way, and then you close the valve at the end, and you pull, you're gonna create a vacuum. Because the normal air pressure on the inside of station is pushing on the back side of the piston, it creates a force. More importantly, a constant force. This is super simple, and super clever. So as the vacuum pulls the pistons up, it forces this arm down. So pistons go up, arm goes down, and that's constant. And so right now, the, the vacuum is holding this arm to this upper stop. When Mike stands up, it will release, and now he's holding that 50 pounds in this example on his shoulders. Okay. It's way more complicated than I thought it was. Okay, one more time, please, Mike. Okay, here we go. You're going down. Going down. Vacuum is pressing him down, and now he's standing up against the force of the vacuum. Hey, uh, Dustin, this is just simple lever. This is Archimedes. First class, <laughs> and second class. Don's right. It's just a lever. If the vacuum is pulling up on one side of the bar, it's going to be pushing down with a constant force on the other. Another cool thing is that if you vary the position of the fulcrum, you can vary the weight. In fact, they've got an easy way to adjust that, so a guy like me can work out with guys like Mike and Don. Okay. Wow. Feels like weight. Yeah. It feels exactly like weight. It's weight. It, that's how it was designed. Okay, so here's a question. So, is this all about muscle? It's about muscle. Okay. It's about bones. What do you mean? Uh, bone density. Loading your skeletal system. With I thought when you work out, you're working out because of your muscles. Well, you are. Um, you're also putting loads on your skeletal system, most notably the hip area, the spine area, 
everything kind of below the waist you don't use in space. So what is what is loading the bone do for you? You said bone density? Yes. Um, uh, loading the bone stimulates bone growth. Okay. So we want to minimize any losses by stimulating the bones as much as we can. Okay. Is that a big deal in space? It's a huge deal. What, what do you mean it's a huge deal? Well, w without that, you can stand to lose two to two and a half percent of your bone density per month. Did you already said two to two and a half percent per month? That's crazy if you extrapolate that out. Your bones are going to be gone. So after 30 months, you, you have half your bone density? Possibly, but no one's ever, I mean, we don't send people to the space station and not have them exercise. Okay, if it takes three years to get to Mars and back, a certain percentage of your bone mineral density lost every month is a huge deal. So I started pouring through the data and I learned that the bulk of that bone mineral density that's lost is lost in the lower back, in the hip, and in the femur. And if you think about it, that makes sense because where do the elderly most often break a bone? So to understand this even better, I went to the Nutritional Biochemistry Lab there at Johnson Space Center and I learned that the majority of those minerals are being peed out of the astronauts' bodies. I'm with Dr. Scott Smith and you are part of the Nutritional Biochemistry team here at NASA Johnson Space Center. That's a really nice logo. I, I like that. So I, I noticed that you have pee on the counter here. Why is this so important? Well, we, we're a Nutritional Biochemistry Lab, so we look at biochemistry. Um, a lot of the work that we do is focused on bone because there's a lot of things in your body, um, it, there's a lot of things in your diet that relate to your bones. So things like calcium and, and other factors all affect your bones. So we're very interested in looking at those things. And the easiest way to do that is by looking at blood samples and urine samples. Your body is pretty smart and it maintains the skeleton that you need to do what you're doing. And what that means is that you're forming as much bone as you're breaking down. It's like this cycle and you're making bone and you're losing it at the same time. Right, and as long as you're doing those two things at the same rate, then all is good. Okay. When you start doing more of one than the other is when you get out of balance. And this is one minus 80 freezer. We've got another dozen or so upstairs. We've got another dozen or so two hours away in a bunker that we protect them so that if a hurricane gets here and the power goes off, we don't lose those samples. Are you serious? So, we protect so you got to protect things. the astronaut pee? Yes, like you wouldn't believe. It, oh. is, it is considered a national treasure. Astro that's my goal in life is for my pee to be considered a national treasure. It's, it's, it's not quite what the moon was. You're, you're being are. serious because, I mean, if you think about it, like you can't reproduce it because the amount of money and taxpayer dollars that went into creating that specific controlled astronaut pee is irreplaceable. That's correct. And if you want, Anne is here. Uh, I'm going to give you this. Ann is running urine calciums right now. Really? So, so Ann, you're taking the urine and you're putting it in the machine? Yes, I'm diluting it 1 to 100. How does it feel to know that a national treasure is in your hands, that national treasure being astronaut urine? It's really something special. <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to answer that question. <laughs> this instrument is, is looking at urinary calcium. So you're saying that that's where the bone mass goes. They, that's they, correct. They pee, you, they pee out their bones. They pee out their bones. Whoa. There's a fire going on in here. You didn't tell me that. No, I didn't tell you. What's up with the fire? The machine injects a sample into that flame. Okay. And then as it burns, what happens is the machine measures the, the absorption of light. And based on standards and curves, um, you're looking at, it absorbs different wavelengths from that heat and tells you where the calcium is. There's a lot of big words happening right here, but I want us to stop and think about what's actually happening. We're taking astronaut pee and we're burning it. And we're looking at the color of burnt astronaut pee. Is that correct? That's correct. In crew members of the ARED, when they came back, when we looked at their x-rays, their bone mineral density was the same as it was before flight. And that's never happened before. And that's never happened before with good diet and hard exercise. This is the percent change per month in whole body bone mineral density. Okay. In crew members on the MIR, where they didn't have any resistive exercise. In crew members early on station, where they had the IRED. In crew members with the ARED. Boom. Can't exactly. go to Mars, can't go to Mars, you can go to Mars. Theoretically, yes. Because of A-RED. I and mean, again, there's still questions about the strength and the quality. I get it, but, but let's go to Mars. Seriously, that's that's like, that data is very, very clear. That's what we thought. 
Another thing that's really cool about this research is that all these papers that are being cranked out by the biochemistry lab at NASA are not just applicable to space. In the future, these lessons about diet and skeletal loading will also go to help people like my granny, who's currently recovering from a broken hip. And to me, that's a huge deal. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Smarter Every Day. Smarter Every Day is sponsored by Audible.com, and this is the book I want you to get. It's called Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. I listened to this thing on the way out to Houston. It's a really, really good book. I enjoyed it a lot. It's about all the weird things that the human body does when you put it in space. What happens to all the stuff that your skin excretes? How does your body detect blood pressure? How is that effect affected by the gravity vector? It's all kinds of weird stuff. Human bodies do, you know, crude things. So you're not gonna wanna listen to this around the kids. I cannot recommend this enough. Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. You can get that for free at audible.com slash smarter. I think you'll like it. Also, feel free to check out the rest of the space series. If you feel like this episode earned your subscription, feel free to do that or even support on Patreon, but only if it earned it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Wow. It feels like weight. Yeah. It feels exactly like weight. It's weight. <laughs> That's how it was designed. So I can feel the inertia from those flywheels. Yeah. Those little details are really important when you get in a weightless environment. Holy cow. It feels like I've got weight on my shoulders. And it, it just shows that what engineers can do when they're given a, a, a challenging project and, and you give them free reign to come up with a design. Like, I'm, I don't like lifting weights and I'm already sad. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing.